pro, they had a pro team when I when I was going there. A guy named Reggie Rankin, Pat Walls. Uh, I don't know if you know any of their relatives and everything like that, but these guys, I mean, they were phenomenal. That, that seemed like that team could have went on and played the Cavaliers as far as we were concerned. And here I am, a little freshman out there trying to play with these cats, trying to hoop with them, everything like that, doing my thing. And uh, although it was fun, that seemed like it went so fast because I was a freshman, and the next thing I blinked, I was a senior. And now, the scary part, the scariest part of getting older is not knowing. That's the scariest part. And the way to make that not so scary is to sharpen your mind as best as, as, as you can. Find out as much as you possibly can about what you want to be. And do your best to treat others as you want to be treated. And one of the things that you want to be treated is, one of the most important things is going to be to you is be respected. Is respect pretty important to you guys? You think it's important to your teachers? <clears throat> sure it is. Nobody wants to be, when I'm up here teaching a class and you're back there making noise, you're back there sleeping, you're back there talking to somebody, that's disrespectful to the teacher. Yeah, if she says something to you, you feel like you were disrespected. She called you out. She fronted on you. You know, and that's one of the things that people don't know. You've got you to give respect to get some. So that's important to you. So you guys admit it. Getting respect is very important to you because respect goes a long way. You respect me, I respect you. And that causes me to want to believe in you because I believe you can do this. And then I'll share with you a little bit extra. How many people, I bet some of you guys got a special relationship with your teachers that the other person doesn't have. Would you, would, is that fair to say? You guys think you got a special relationship with your teachers? They share something with you? Because everybody got a favorite teacher. And the funny thing about having a favorite teacher is you tend to do better in her class than you do anybody else's. Who's your, anybody got a favorite class that they like? How many math guys in here? Oh, okay, okay. How many guys that are so, uh, social, social, uh, what do you call it? Political people. Anybody doing well in political? Teachers, stop raising your hand. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, as you can see, that's a fine example right there. The uh, how many, uh, let me ask this to the teachers or the kids. How many of you guys are following the destiny that you chose when you were in school? Anybody want to be a teacher when they was in school and you followed your destiny? Has it been rewarding? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this question. I asked them, did you follow? They said yes. Would you guys notice that? They said yes. And then I asked you, was it rewarding? How long did it take them to answer? So, I was, I, would you consider that an immediate response? Huh? No. I would consider it an immediate, immediate response because I said, did you enjoy it? Are you glad you did? And they said yes. I didn't even get the thousand one, thousand three seconds, the thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. I didn't get to that. I didn't get the thousand one. He answered it immediately to me. So that just says to you, they followed, they had a dream, they followed their destiny, and they reached their destiny. Not many people can say that. Right. Because to me, my thing was, I didn't want to work in a steel mill. In fact, I wanted to be, I wanted to have a job that I was clean. Mm -hmm. So I probably took it a step further because I don't actually don't have a hair salon where I actually wash hair. <laughs> so I never get my hands dirty. I, I, I keep them clean. But at the same time, your ability to deal with public comes from your manners and your ability to respect people. So, uh, as I break that down, I, and I encourage everybody to learn how to play chess, it teaches you how to think. Chess is a game that teaches you how to sharpen your mind. Anybody ever played chess before? Okay, you guys are on your way. Keep it up, don't stop. Because chess just helps you break it down to, if I make this move, he'll do that, and if I do this, he'll do that, and if I do that, he'll do this, this, and this. There you go. Well. That's how you break down your thinking. That's how you avoid making mistakes. So once you play it in your head, then you get a chance to go over it, then you actually do the move. What are the games that you play? Anytime you play a video game, what's the objective of a video game? You said win. <laughs> I heard that. What, what's the other objective? Finish the game as fast as you can. Finish the game as fast as you can. I thought you were going to say advance to the next level. Because if you don't advance to the next level, you can't what? You can't win. So, how's that set? How's that compared to your life? 
Because you guys right now are advancing to the next level. You're sophomores. Your next move is juniors. Then your next move is seniors. Now, contingent on, uh, depending on how well you advance, that's going to kind of have a play on how you're going to do, how well you're going to do in life. So, how many people started something and didn't finish it? How often do you do that? Do you find yourself doing that often? Okay. Well, then, okay, now, if you start something and don't finish it, that's a bad habit to start, for one. But there could be mitigating circumstances. Say mitigating circumstances. Mitigating circumstances. Mitigating circumstances. And what that means is there's some things that are involved why you don't want to finish this. Sometimes you don't finish because it was boring. You lost interest. This wasn't really your thing. And then sometimes you are a quitter, which you don't want to be. You want to, you want to move that piece out of your life as fast as possible. You don't want to quit. So in order to mitigate or decrease things you start you don't want to finish, be purposeful in what you want to do. Be mindful of what you want to do. If you want to get into the Marines, why you want to do that? Break that down as to why you want to do that. If you want to be a music producer, you want to be a dancer, basketball player, you know, why you want to do that? How difficult is it to become? They got one guy, um, Steph Curry, for instance. Well, a lot of you guys know Steph Curry is a pretty good uh, ball player, right? You agree? Okay. How many shots you think he took to get that to get to that level before the game? Somebody been paying attention. 1,000 shots before the game. Mm. LeBron, how many shots you think? 1,000 and one. Huh? 1,000 and one. No, he said 1,000, <laughs> but he shows up early. If LeBron's practice is seven, he gets there He gets there probably at five. Yeah. When Kobe was working out, guess how many times, Kobe, what time Kobe get to practice? Practice at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Kobe was arriving at 3 a.m. Kobe already had, when they walked in the gym, Kobe was already soaking wet. And they asked him one time, they said, man, how come you don't want to come to the club? He said, well, first of all, I don't get paid to go to a club. He said, I have been paid to be a professional basketball player. And the reason why he was so serious about it is because he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt how many people didn't make it wanted to become a basketball player, a professional ball player, and they got there and they messed their opportunity up because they wanted a club, they wanted to party. Your, body's, your body is your commodity. The healthier you are, the better you perform. The sharper your mind, now back forward to you guys, your mind is your commodity. The sharper it is and the better you perform, the more you excel. That makes sense? Everybody think that makes sense? Okay, guess what other thing that comes along with a sharp mind, the better you excel? The more income you make the more income you make. So, does that sound reasonable? You get out of something what you put into it. If you put a little bit in it, you're going to get a little bit out of it. And if you put 110% in it, you should get a reasonable amount of return on your investment. Because, let me put it this way, everybody wants a return on their investment no matter what you're doing. I ask this question often. How many millionaires have you done on right now? You understand the question? If you don't, it's okay. What I mean by that is, how many millionaires are you wearing? Your coat, your shirt, your shoes, your bag, your backpack. Quick story on backpacks, guess where that came from? Missionaries used to go to Africa and they would uh, take the word of God to Africa and try to share it amongst the tribes or whatnot. And what they noticed was, all the women that were pregnant and having babies in the morning they were in the field in the evening. In America, you get three months off from being pregnant, but not, not, not in an environment where it's a work, and if you don't work, you don't eat the environment. And they noticed that the ladies were putting their babies in backpacks and putting them on the front of them so they could still feed the baby and they could still work. And they turned around, and, 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 and the uh, missionary turned around, brought backpack ideas back to America, and now, of course, it'll there's a multimillionaire right around somewhere selling backpacks. 
and they got names like North Face on them. And, uh, 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 what was the other one? Jansport. There you go. So Spalding. So now somebody, somebody made. So somebody made that. Somebody made your shirt. How many? How, how many people? Where do you think he's at? On an island somewhere. Somebody made your turtleneck. Somebody made the dye for your clothes. Somebody made your shoe strings. Somebody made your boots. Somebody made your shoes. Somebody made your glasses. Somebody made the frame for your glasses. So you're surrounded by millionaires and ideas. So, and that's what I did basically. I got an idea. I didn't want, I told you right now, I didn't want to be dirty. I didn't want to work in a steel mill. You know, I believe I can use my mind, learn how to do something, do something well, and, and, and learn from it. And here's the idea. If you guys, if you guys don't know, here's an idea for being a millionaire. You want to hear the secret? I told you I made a million dollars by the time I was 35. And along with that came a really good lifestyle. I've done a good, I've done a really good lifestyle. Like I said, that money came. I was working well off, meaning I had to use it. That's how much I accumulated. And I used it. I had to pay my taxes. I had to take care of my family. I had to pay my bills, my utilities, and my tax, and all that stuff that comes along with it. But there are perks. I drive a really nice car, uh, uh, multiple cars. I have a convertible Jaguar. I have a uh, Escalade. Um, I have a uh, Mercedes, a BMW. And I'm a, how many cars can you drive at once? One. one. Exactly. And that's exactly what uh, one of the uh, pros told Charles Barkley. When Charles Barkley hit the league, he was buying up all these cars. He asked him, man, one of the veteran ball players, his name is Julius Irving. And he asked him, he said, why are you buying so many cars? He said, how many can you drive at once? He says, you've got to make this last the rest of your life. So you guys gotta make sure your education lasts you the rest of your life and it serves you. So the sharper your mind, the better your ground, and the more likely you are to make more money. Now, as far as, uh, as, far as and money isn't the end all. Money is only the answer, that's only one thing. Money to life is like uh, oil to a rusty chain. It'll make the chain go better, but if there's a weak link, change. If there's a weak link in the chain, all the oil in the world ain't going to help, but you got to fix that. So if you were a team and you were the weak link, we got to talk to him and say, hey, man, get your head in the game. Focus. I know you suffered a loss at home. Your dog got hit by a car. You're sad about it. You lost a cousin. You heard some bad news. You know what I mean? But you got to focus. I need you here now. So you got to be able to focus. And the stronger your mind, stronger your ground. Your mind is your superpower. That's the commodity that you work with. Commodity, you understand when I say commodity? Commodity is your green. That's your bargaining power, which you can work with. So, you gotta remember again, senior year ain't too far away from now. And then after that, are you going to college or are you going to Marines? Life's gonna get real serious. And if you try to go back and reach back to your past, well, reaching back to your past and trying to hang on to that is like, we're going into winter and you're trying to hang on to summer. You can't hang on to summer. It's almost like trying to put the leaves back on the trees as they're falling. That's how difficult your life can be. But again, you stay strong, you stay focused, keep your mind strong, keep away from nonsense. You're gonna achieve, you're gonna achieve your goal and what you're trying to do. Now, as far as my barbershop is concerned, I learned this theory on, and you guys can write this down and you can remember it, here's how to be a millionaire. Find something you do well. Be the best at it. Deal earnest and honest, and surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Find something you do well. Be the best at it. You're the best draw, if you draw, voiceover, you're the best military person, you know, you're the best real estate agent. Be the best you could possibly be. Best music producer. Be the best you can be. Well, you already know you guys understand music because you hear it every day. You gravitate to it. Um, be the best at it. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals and deal earnest and honest. You will be wealthy. Anybody know the name Rodney Jerkins? Rodney Jerkins is a music producer. Rodney Jerkins did one song for Britney Spears. You guys know who she is? He 
did one song for Britney Spears. You know how much, and the money he made from that one song, he bought a he bought a uh, oceanfront property in Florida and a Lamborghini at the same time. That's how much money he made producing this music, giving it to this pop star, and she sang it and the song exploded. And he got a check before she got a check because he was the producer. Producer owns the music. The artist performs the music. Prince traced his name to the artist and nobody understood it because he had a dispute with his record company and he said, they, they told him, well, we own your name, you can't use your own name. So he said, okay, then I'm going to change my name to the artist, formerly known as Prince, which is a great play, a magnificent play on words because that's what they call all musicians, artists. They don't even recognize them as a name, they just call them an artist. So as you get older, and again, and the same people that are making that money, they did the same thing you're doing right now. They're trying to make sure their brain is sharp so they can learn how to do this business, so they can learn how to make it work for them. So the better you pay attention in class, like even the art of listening, I'll give you a little cheat. The art of listening is to put your hands down, empty your head, close your mouth, and open your ears. Empty your hands, close your mouth, open your ears. And you'll be able to receive the information because you only get out of something what you put into it. So after I went to Barber College one year, my first year out of Barber College, I made $72,000. Before I started Barber College, I was making $7 an hour. Hmm. Because I was a good barber, and I knew how to cut, I knew how to cut different styles, I could cut any nationalities hair to set my chair. I ended up graduating Barber College one year at the top of my class. And the crazy thing about it, 70% of the people that I cut their hair followed me to my new shop. Hmm. Now, my shop, my haircuts are $30 a person. Most people pay me $40 to $50 a cut. So I normally take, um, as far as, uh, I normally do three to four people in an hour. And I learned, I said, well, is there anything I can do to make more money? And I said, how do I change, the, how do I add to that? So I learned how to do women's hair. And then I learned how to do twists. And then I know how to do locks. Now you come, if you're coming in, it's a $150 hair do right there you guys got. That's how much you would charge. And then you're talking about dyeing. So that's another $50 I add to it. So you were actually going to a salon and you did that correct. And it's one thing you have your friends do your hair, but oiling your scalp, the proper maintain and managing your hair, helping you grow your hair out to get to this point. You have to keep your hair healthy. You have to keep your hair washed. You have to keep it clean. You see what I'm saying? You have to get a conditioner. So there's things that go into maintaining the hair in a proper way. When you see somebody's hair looking really, really dope or fresh, what's the new word? I don't know. What's the newest word? When you say somebody's tight, oh, his hair is tight. What do y'all use? Clean. Clean. It's clean. It's cold. That's fine. It's, it's what? What'd you say? I'll say it's hot. Okay. It's hot. I didn't even y'all still see. I didn't even know kids still say it's nice because that's what we used to say. But hot fire is the newest thing I use. That, that's fire. That's tight. And one dude told me facts. I learned that early on. I know I sound old now, but I was here with y'all. I said, You mean that's a fact? He said, No, man, just facts. I said, Oh. Meaning, that's right. Facts. Word. We used to say word. Word. Oh, you say word? <laughs> so we used to say word. My parents said, they used to tick my parents off. What do you mean, word? What are you talking about? Word. <laughs> so, and that's the other thing, getting connected sometimes, just for, even with your teachers, that will help your teachers stay connected to you, learning the language that you speak. You know what I mean? How do you like it if I walk up to you and shake your hand? You know what I mean? She's going to shake my hand. You're going to think, okay, everything I can. But if I came up to you, what's up, Doc? How was the day today, man? You know, everything going good? Y'all going to look like, hey, Mr. Chris is tight. He's kind of cool, you know. He understands me. And if you think that I understand you, if you ever have a problem and you're going through something, what's the likelihood of you coming to share with me? Mr. Chris, you got a minute, man? Can I talk to you about something? Like that? You know, got two, I got two young ladies. They both like me. I kind of like one, don't like the other one, but I started talking to her first. Um, I got a teacher, you know what I mean, kind of in my face. Kind of pissing me off. I won't go off, but what do you think, you know, 
Because that's the kind of thing the teachers want to have with you. Because I rather you, because your sharp mind, you've been working on chess, you've been working on ironing things out, and seeing what's the smart thing to do and what's the unintelligent thing to do, speak up. Share with somebody. Try to share with them before it gets to the point where you want to blow up. Because if you blow up, what's going to happen? Chances are you're going to lose because you'll probably get suspended if you blow up in school. Not to mention people going to be looking at you. Oh, man, I thought he was a good kid. Oh, no, man, he was constantly throwing deaths. He was doing this, that, and the other. You know, my kids, I'm pretty well known. And uh, as, as my barber, as I started getting better, as, as I started getting better, I started meeting people. And I started having a desire to reach kids. So I started, other than just in my chair, doing public speaking them in my chair, I mean, just speaking to kids in my chair, people thought I was so good, you need to come and speak to somebody. So I started getting invitations to speak to youth. So I spoke at the Salesian Boys and Girls Club. Anybody ever heard of that before? Okay, so I started speaking at the Salesian Boys and Girls Club and I held the record. That's an elective thing that you don't have to stay if you don't want. I spoke to those kids for about an hour and 45 minutes and everybody stayed and they had more questions in a little bit. So I just progressed it a little further. I was traveling and everything like that. Then I got up to a point where when I come and speak like this, it's $150 an hour. So learning how to become a good speaker is a pretty lucrative thing as well. And I learned, I started talking to people. Anybody know this face? You should know she was just on TV. Anybody watching TV anymore, watching the news? Well, this is this lady's name is Nana Watson. She's the president of the NAACP. And uh, one of the things that she's talking about is she's trying to bring, uh, the school board was trying to charge more money, or trying to get more money out of taxpayers to build schools and put stuff in schools. Only problem is they got a lot of money last time around and didn't use it, and he didn't tell you what happened to the money. And then you turn around and start asking for more. So she's one of the posts in the community that's raising the question, where the money at? Where the receipts? Y'all heard the receipts? Y'all heard that? <laughs> they want receipts on Diddy now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of my mentors. And um, he's a superhero. He's uh, uh, House Representative Ray Miller. He's wrote legislation. He's wrote laws for our country. And the crazy thing about Ray Miller is, and he speaks at some of my some of my conferences. He came from Mount Vernon. Everybody know where Mount Vernon is? He told a story where they didn't get new shoes, they got new cardboard. So if your shoes got a hole in them, you get new cardboard, not new shoes. You guys go get shoes, you got choices, you got colors and everything like that. You know. So this is a representative of the State House of the United States of the United States of America, White House. This is where he worked. And he just as cool as a fan. And um, as I learned how to uh, speak them, and this is Dan Watson, this is another board representative. So these are the people that I'm meeting with on a regular basis. What they want to hear from little old Daniel Kreese, because little old Daniel Kreese is a child advocate and a senior advocate. So I don't like the injustices that seniors are dealing with. I don't like some of the injustices I see with veterans dealing with. So I definitely don't like to see what you kids are going through. So I definitely call them on the, call them on the carpet. As I said, the other thing I uh, pursued is fashion design. So I learned how to design my own clothes. So I make hats, I put outfits together, you know, and uh, I make clothes from scratch. So if you really want to be different, this is a very lucrative thing too, because uh, this jacket is about three hundred fifty dollars. Uh, to design a jacket like that, it, it cost me about eighty dollars. That's a pretty good return, huh? On my investment. So the hats, I get them generic, and then I put I put the designs on them. I put the belt around it, or it's called the hat man. I put the feathers in it to change it up. So hats run four hundred and fifty dollars. Cost me ninety, about ninety dollars to make. Pretty good change to turn on my investment. How much you call? How, uh, let me put it this way, give you an idea. How much you think it costs to make a top-notch Mercedes? Mercedes costs one hundred fifty thousand. How much? Three fifty-eight. 
car is 150,000. What do you think cost to build it? 60, 80K. You're right. You're just about right. So, uh, depending on what they got into it for you. But the public at large, ain't no way in the world that we have. They wouldn't even believe it. But it has to be set up that way where the car manufacturers, they got to make a great profit or they can't be in business. You buy a house, you go to the bank, you buy a house that's $80,000, you get a 30 year loan on it. Your, your mortgage payment is about $80 a uh, mortgage you pay a month. How much it costs to make an $80,000 house? Let's see if you're in the building, please come to the main office. How much do you think it costs to make an $80,000 house? $70,000. Yeah, dang, <laughs> you want it. <laughs> it. Really, it costs about $30,000, $35,000 to make that. I built it from scratch. I went into construction too when I got out of school. So I was kind of jumping jump the guns and learning how to help build my life so I can maintain it. So that way I can go buy the house I live in. I bought the house from a bank for $132,000. My house just got appraised for $600,000. Hmm. So I could literally go cash my house in and be $400,000 short of a millionaire. And now, remember I told you a million working? That would be over half a million sitting. Meaning I can go dip in it whenever I get it ready for it. But at the same time, I'm thinking, because my mind is sharp, because I'm paying attention, because I'm learning more, if I can get to that point where I'm smart enough to make a real estate investment, which is what you said, that's why I said, I don't care how many doctors and lawyers are out here and everything like that. Here's the difference between the doctors and lawyers and you. You get a rich real estate agent, you get a doctor, rich doctor, and you get a rich lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know one thing the real estate agent don't have that the doctor and lawyers do have? Can you guess? Anybody guess? What'd you say? A bunch of debt. That's right. Those doctors and lawyers spend a mountain of money to get their education, and they still got to pay off loans. That real estate agent went to school for two years, Got good at what he wanted to do, and he started selling property. You got zero education debt, and you got a uh, jump start on all the money you got in the bank. And now, the smarter you get, the more ridiculous it is to waste the money. So you're not going to waste your money. So he's going to be smart. So now, he's got enough money to diversify. And you know what diversification is? Put your money in other areas that make money. So... You guys better get real cool with your real estate agent because he can turn around and invest in your voiceover of what you want to be. And he can also invest in your record company. <laughs> so you better stay real cool with him. So as you make the money and you're sharp with your brain and everything like that, you know how to diversify and you know how to move money around. So as my barbershop grew, my speaking engagements grew, I said, I don't want to keep traveling around and move into get my own place and let people come to it. So I started the Q Daniel Priest Multicultural Center. So where kids can come in, learn how to shake hands properly, learn how to look people in the eye, learn how to stick your chest out and project your voice. Because it shouldn't be to the point where I gotta step on your shoe to make you look me dead in the eye and say, I wish you'd do that again. See, when you're mad, you can really direct what you're thinking. You ain't got no problem looking at me in my eye. If I put my hands on you, you ain't got no problem looking at me, man. You you all right? You, you, you want some problems? It shouldn't take you to have to get mad to be able to be precise and concise about what you're saying and what you're doing and you mean what you say. Because a person, and you guys, one of the things I'll say, remember this. Don't take my word for it. Test out what I'm saying to you. I used to play a game to find out who's the betrayer. Who's going to stab me in my back? So, all you got to do is get three of you together and start talking about somebody that's not here. You remember John, man, John ain't that shot. Generally, the guy that's going to betray you is the dude in the group that's going to say, John ain't that good. I know somebody got a better jumper than him. Steven got a new car, man. Did you see it? It was tight, man. That car ain't nothing. The guy that's going to stab me in the back is normally the dude that's saying, they call him the devil's advocate. You ever heard that term before? Okay. Only problem about being a devil's advocate is that means you work for the devil. You're an agent, you're an imp. So you work for the bad guy. That's what you want to do in life, work for the bad guy, whether it's whatever you call the devil, demon, whatever you call the bad guy. You don't want to be adversarial. You want to be helpful. 
and even in your personal relationships, whether it be between a guy or a girl, if I ain't lifting you up, if I ain't picking you up, what's the opposite? Pull me down. Pull me down. See what I mean? You don't want nobody pulling you down, so why be involved with them? If they ain't paying attention in class, if they ain't trying to help you out and everything like that, you know what you need to do? Change your seat. Simply just change your seat. You ain't got to, you don't, you don't owe nobody no explanation. You're not paying attention. You're being disruptive. Do you? But I'm going to get over here and pay attention. One way I do, one way I did that is, I did the same thing you just did. To ensure that I paid attention in class, I started sitting up front. I simply started sitting up front. And you know one thing about it, when I started sitting up front, teachers started noticing because I'm paying attention, I'm looking them dead in their eyes, and I'm asking questions, and I'm getting notes. And the funny thing is, most of the classes I set up in front, I did better in. Those are the classes I got my B, A, Bs in. I don't know what y'all call them now, but they still call that? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah? Oh, okay, I thought you switched it. Okay. But I, that's where I got my better grades when I set up front, and I didn't sit back there with my, my guys as clowns. And, I, and you know, to be honest with you, you got to, again, Question everything. Why are you paying attention? Because just think if somebody told Jamie Foxx, don't be a clown. Well, you'd have missed out on one of the world's greatest comedians. But only thing is, there's a time and place for everything. So now you guys got to be able to discern that. There's a time, even with your slang, why is it important to learn how to talk? and be, stick your, project your voice and everything. Because when you're in the corporate world and trying to get a job out here, people don't understand slang, know what I'm saying? No, but if you articulate what you're saying, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be more abreast to understand you. So, when you're with your friends, talk your language, but learn the other language. Because learning corporate language and learning how to communicate is as different as Spanish is to English. French is to English. Proper language is to corporate world what slang is to the street. Now I see you in the street, I'm gonna say, hello sir, how are you doing? That's code for please rob him. He must want to turn in his shoes. You know. Well, I say I'm sad, man. Even your walk. You guys know did you know your walk is even important? Yes, sir. Walk is strong. Me and me and my daughter, we play we play a game and uh, She said, Dad, I said, what does your walk say about you? And she says, uh, well, I said, here's your walk. I said, you know what your walk says? You're not paying attention, and you're likely to get somebody trying to, you're more likely somebody trying to take advantage of you if you're walking in a parking lot or something, walking on a sidewalk, versus me walking like this. She said, well, you walk like this. You always walk like you own something. Now, what's that walk say to you? You're in touch, man. You gotta have an opinion. You can't say, I don't know. What's that walk say to you? Rich. Okay. Rich, well to do. We'll call it well to do. Confident. See, you did, though. Because you know the difference between that and <laughs> what's that walk say? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna kick it. Well, you know, I probably can't defend myself. That might say, just say that. But then again, you never know. You might find out your black belt, but you just like to walk. <laughs> so that led me. My public speaking thing led me to want to open up my own center, invite people in, just like you guys and try to sharpen your minds and get you to pay attention to where you're going. Because if you don't pay attention, you're gonna trip in life. And if you trip in life, you're liable to fall. And when you fall in life, here's one thing about falling, some people don't know how to get back up, mm -hmm. especially depending on how, far, how, how hard you fell and how bad you got injured. <clears throat> anybody ride a bike, like when, anybody remember when you rode your bike, how you fell and you got hurt? How fast did you get back on? And don't let the suit fool you. I still hold the record for one couch and six garbage bags as I was a ramp jumper. I'm going to be evil can eat. I still hold that record. Okay. So, don't let the suit fool you. 
I'm still could ride a wheelie. Alright? And I mean not just one, I mean ride one. Alright? My son, my son, my kids, I tell you, you guys probably know more than me than my kids do right now. My son looked at me, he's like, ride a wheelie, what would I want to do that for? Because he don't know no better. But back in the day, if you could ride a wheelie, that says, if nothing else, you the man. And uh, when somebody calls you, you the man, what happens after that? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You heard the man. You get respect. So when you're good at something, what did I say? It goes right back. Find something you do well. Be the best at it. Deal earnest and honest. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals. You're going to get respect. You're going to make money. You're going to get respect. And you're going to bring others with you. So, Michael Jordan was great, but he never really said out loud he was he was good. But what made him what made him great is when he started including others. So that's what will make you. That's the difference between good and great. When you're really doing a good job, you're an outstanding individual. But when you're doing a great job, you make others around you want to do better and be better. Does that make sense? Anybody ever experienced that? If you have it, you will. You will. Because that's the same thing your teachers are doing right now. They're already, they're doing well. They're making money. But what makes them a great teacher is making sure they reach your students. Make sure you become the best you can possibly be. Because obtaining success is not that difficult. You just got to use your superpower. What's your superpower? Okay. Well, thank you for listening. I'm, I'm, it's an honor to be here. You know, I enjoy, I'll, I'll be watching you guys. I'll be paying attention. I'll be checking on you. See how well you're doing. Uh, we got time for a couple of questions. Got time for some questions. Mm -hmm. Anybody got a question? Yes, sir. Okay. You talked about not wanting to go into the steel work or the mill work. Okay. What... Was it a person or like what made you say, I don't want to do that, I want to do something different? One of the biggest things is the steel work was a filthy, dangerous job. People got killed in the steel mill. And I'm talking, when I was when I was playing basketball, I was a senior. Some guys didn't want to go to college, they went in the steel mill. And those guys ended up hit, breaking the leg, busting up their kneecaps, uh, messing with their hearing, messing with their vision. Because I'm talking molten, melted steel. It is a hard job, but they paid well. They were paying twenty five dollars an hour. Some of them guys, they was coming home with, they was coming home with a thousand dollars a week, and a thousand dollars a week in nineteen eighty six in today's money right. is like three thousand right. dollars. Beats making minimum wage when I was your age was like five dollars, five twenty five, five sixty five eighty six in eighty six. So can you imagine, just because you graduated and you went to work at this job, even though it was dangerous, you was bringing home four grand a month and you still lived at home and you weren't even paying rent. So four grand a month, 48 times 12, $48,000. You was making, we call it grown man, you make grown up money. $48,000, dude, you could go buy your own house and any car you want. And dress, oh my. I went from putting a girl on the handlebars, you know what I mean, and then she graduated. She ain't, all I had was a jump shot and a smile. She dated the dude, he got a car with air conditioning and all the doors open. <laughs> when I got my first car, it had a shotgun blast and a windshield and no exhaust, but it ran. And guess what? It got in, because that beats walking. It beats walking. I never forget the first time I found out how cool I was. I had a new outfit on. I thought I was cold. No, I'm strutting. Dude pulled up in this junky car. was like, right, 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 right. And he had this girl in there. She was pretty as she wanted to be. So I looked. I kind of snickered. So, and she looking at me. She's smiling. She's looking me up and down. So I'm strutting her hard. So then I went ahead. I crossed the street right in front of him. She's smiling. He looking at me, snarling, looking at me all hard, everything like that. And then when I crossed the street, now he comes and turns the corner. Now he's riding. Now I'm looking at him. And his snarl went to a smile. 
Because I'm walking smooth, and he's looking at me, and he's snickering, and he's putting on down the street. What changed? What changed from here to when he went around the corner and he's driving and looking at me? What changed? What did he realize? I don't care how cool I was. When he put it down the street, I was still walking. And he got the girl. I vowed that day I'm going to get me a car. <laughs> I worked hard. I saved my money. I got me a car. And the first thing I could afford was a car with a shotgun blast and a windshield and no exhaust. But one day, I'm going to save enough money to give me an exhaust. I'm going to save enough money to give me a windshield that ain't cracked. And I got to peek out the side and drive. And I did. And that car, ironically enough, is what drove me to Columbus. I graduated, I worked, got the car tuned up, got it tight and everything, and I drove to Columbus, and that brought me here. And it started my career at Franklin University. I was going to school to be a lawyer and a psychologist. I wanted to learn how you think, and I wanted to learn how to operate, how the law worked. And unfortunately, my father had a heart attack. Thank God he's still living. But that was there with my money. And then boom, life came at me fast. I had to learn how to grow up and I was not going back home to work in a mill. So I figured it out because I had manners and I knew how to communicate and I knew how to talk. I went into a job that was customer service and I ended up working at Sears and I ended up working a commission job. And then I made my money plus commission. And then I worked it out from there. But then I also found out I don't want to be in a position where I could be at a job and somebody can tap me on my shoulder and say, hey man, you've been here for 10 years, I really appreciate it, but uh, we just eliminated that department. But you're a great guy. So how do I get out of that situation? Work for myself, become an entrepreneur. That way if somebody tells me, hey, I don't want your business, I ain't coming to your barbershop no more, good. You're gonna make room for all these other people. Because I figured out, found something I could do well, become the best at it, deal earnest and honest, and I surround myself with like-minded individuals. Anybody else got a question? Yes, sir. What made you want to design your clothes and all that stuff? Because I love to dress, and I didn't want to wait. Because most people that bought a bad outfit, and it don't fit them, what do you got to do? You got to go to a tailor, get a description, get somebody to do it. Well, I took home at to learn how to sew. So that way, if I want to wear something to that op to a, a function that's going to happen tonight, if I bought that today and I want to wear it tonight and I don't know how to sew and I can't find nobody to sew, now I came with my bad outfit tonight. I said, fuck that. I'm a problem solver. So I learned how to solve the problem. And I learned how to, how to work it to uh, see what I need to do to make the problem go away. So I learned how to iron my clothes. I know how to wash my clothes. I learned how to sew my clothes. And now that millionaire that's making all this money off me, now I can go get a blank shirt, t-shirt, find a nice iron on, put it on there, heat it up, boom, now I got my own designer shirt. For $9. Versus going to pay somebody else some money for a $30 shirt or something goofy on it. You good? Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I got you. <clears throat> you say you did really stay with the I did real estate. Once I started making money, I learned I learned some of the rules and regulations about life. You got to eat. First of all, you need shelter. You need clothing. You need food. You need water. So invest in any one of them. You're going to do well. So as far as real estate, I learned about shelter. So how do you go purchase shelter? So I learned how to work my money to purchase something because I know people don't need a place to live. And now... Renting is going through the roof because a lot of people don't have the credit to go buy a house, so they got to rent. And the good thing about that is, if I bought the house and I get it paid off, again, remember residual income. You're, if your house is already paid for and somebody's still paying you rent, what is that? That's going to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. So on a thousand dollars on a house that's already paid for, so you ain't got to pay the bank nothing else. Pay it, buy it off. So if I'm paying you a thousand dollars a month, how much is that a year? $12,000. And how many times did you have to go to that house and lift your finger to do anything? Somebody's paying attention. That's what I'm talking about. Times two. 24000 times three. You still didn't lift your hand. You still didn't go.